Greetings and salutations there friends, Bobby Manila coming back at you with a video here on YouTube. Let's just get this out of the way nice and quick. I do have this uh, pretty amazing looking bruise on my nose. I was actually considering uh, not shooting a video until it sort of like, until it went away. Uh, but in align with today's topic, which um, is going to be about, I'm going to, today's topic is going to be about imposter syndrome and how it relates to me and how it has affected me and why it was important that even though I've got this bruise in my face that uh, I turned up and uh, I actually shot a video. So <laughs> uh, I had a couple of big training sessions at Brazilian Jiu Jitsu the last couple of days. A lot of open mat training over the, the Easter weekend. So not as much like technical class, just a lot of sparring. So I've been doing a lot of sparring and somewhere along the line, I have been elbowed or something in the nose and it's just left me with this <laughs> beautiful looking uh, bruise on my nose. It fits in with the rest of the look, you know, like the tattooed bald prison nolly. <laughs> and before we get into talking about uh, imposter syndrome and how it pertains to myself, I would like to just quickly plug my Run and Tell EP, which is currently in pre-release over on Bandcamp. Uh, so, meaning you can shoot on over to Brand to <laughs> you can shoot on over to Bandcamp now uh, and purchase a pre-order. Uh, so you will have access to two full songs right now, and then on the 9th of May, which is my beautiful daughter Sky's fourth birthday. Uh, the rest of the EP will drop. You'll get a notification from Bandcamp um, and that the EP has dropped and you'll be able to go back and collect the rest of the EP. So if you do feel so inclined, friends, please head on over to Bandcamp and get your pre-order in. If you do want to support me and my music, that would be absolutely fantastic. So what is imposter syndrome? Let's have a quick... So going to the verywellmind.com. Imposter syndrome, IS, refers to an internal experience of believing that you are not as competent as others perceive you to be. While this definition is usually narrowly applied to intelligence and achievement, it has links to perfectionism and the social context. To put it simply, imposter syndrome is the experience of feeling like a phony. You feel as though at any moment you're going to be found out as a fraud, like you don't belong where you are and you only got there through dumb luck. It can affect anyone, no matter their social status, work background, skill level or degree of expertise. So growing up, like I was always, I was, you know, a, a, a bit of an extra, uh, you might say. Uh, I was always in a school play always had a lead role in the school play. I was always captain of the team. I was, you know, always active playing in bands and, you know, like all that sort of stuff. So a lot of bravado when I was young, for sure. But, you know, obviously, I, looking back, it's, you know, it's just all a bit of a false front to sort of like as a way to deal with uh, my insecurities, my fears uh, and uh, negative self-image and and all that sort of stuff, you know, problems and topics to discuss uh, on other episodes, uh, things to unpack in, in, in other videos for sure. So I was full of bravado and full of gusto and, uh, and just, you know, just one would think from the outside that I was very confident and had no problems whatsoever in life, that I was just going to crash tackle my way through life no matter the odds. On the inside, very different. Very, 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 very different. Although I do love a good challenge, you know, like I've, I enjoy, uh, I enjoy sport. Always played like pretty high levels of competitive sport uh, in lacrosse. And now like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu has been a massive part of my life for uh, over a decade. And I love going to training and testing myself against my against my teammates that said when i do compete i go through massive competition anxiety 
I want nothing more than just to like pull out and not compete. Same as uh, like going before like a really big show, massive performance anxiety, but uh, you know, you just just go out there and, and do your thing. But somewhere up, somewhere later in life, uh, insecurity and doubt really started to to creep into to things as sort of uh, things that I had sort of like worked towards had sort of manifested, but maybe not to the degree that I had sort of hoped so or had you know aspired to, and then I started getting like a lot of knockbacks from things uh, that I was like applying for or applying myself to and I wasn't getting the results that I was after. I wasn't getting like certain jobs or positions or things that I was auditioning for. And it, it really started to, it really started to man manifest itself uh, in, in fear and insecurity. I mean, it was always, it was always there, but I'd always managed to somehow like muscle my way through things, so to speak, and sort of get somewhat uh, the outcome that I was hoping for. But then as I started getting older and more knockbacks for certain things, uh, I started doubting, a lot of doubt really started to creep in for a lot of things. And so now I've had, you know, I've had to pivot businesses many times. You know, obviously there was the, you know, we've had the pandemic, I lost a business and pivoted into another business which has been very interesting and I'm suffering, well not suffering, I'm experiencing a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of imposter syndrome there. So when, as it pertains to myself in music and music production, so, you know, so being a composer, being a producer, a self-produced mixed and mastered studio artist, my imposter syndrome uh, pops up in ways of, uh, I constantly doubt that, I mean, even though I know I'm a competent enough musician. You know, I jump on YouTube and I watch all these amazing guitarists and virtuosos and my head just starts, you know, with the voices, you know, like being yourself, Bobby, you know, like <laughs> you just, you know, look at these guys, they're, they're miles ahead, you know, they just, you, you can't compare or stack up to, to these guys. So start really going down those rabbit holes and, and grinding myself down and getting quite, uh, self-defeatist <laughs> about that. I'm not trying to be Steve Vai or Kirk Hammett or Pliny or, you know, or Intervals. Anyways, you know, th these are some guys that I really, you know, like older, older, old school sort of guys and sort of new school guys that are, like I really, really look up to as players. But I'm not, you know, the thing that I do realize is that I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be these guys, they inspire me, you know, but sometimes when I'm looking at them for inspiration, I get a little lost in that and I start comparing myself to them, which is, you know, the, a massive, a massive, massive no-no. So then I still really start doubting myself as a player and as a, as a songwriter. And then as a music producer, like, again, like I know, I know, you know, that I can put together a, a very pleasing, and well mixed and engineered uh, music production. Translates well across multiple listening environments, you know, uh, and I know that I can do that really well. But then once again, <laughs> like I love and hate YouTube so much. Uh, and you know, once again, I'll jump on and I'll start looking, you know, I'll go looking for inspiration. How, is so -and -so, how does so-and-so do this? Or how does so-and-so do that? And then I start going and I watch these producers <laughs> and I'm listening to their stuff and I'm like, man, my stuff sucks. <laughs> Mine's real bad, you know? And then I start going down those rabbit holes and I'm just like, why are you doing this? Why, why are you, you know, why are you making music? Why are you putting it out on the internet? Like, why are you doing, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And I just like, I really, really start beating myself up unnecessarily about something that I, you know, really like i love music you know like i've loved music my whole life uh it brings me joy just like to make music just like i plug in my guitar and i just like 
strum a chord and it just like makes me happy. You know, and then I get in there and make a song, add some bass and some drums and some vocals and mix that thing and man, it 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 just it makes me happy. It makes me so happy that I wanna then go and share it and put it out into the world. And that's the context that I often forget once I start comparing myself to, to everybody else. How does this pertain to me in my new work? So over the years, I've gotten quite um, infatuated and quite interested in social media, like n not so much like myself, but just how it works and what it is and how powerful it is and getting into, you know, the Facebook ads platform and how that works, uh, you know, like being an independent musician, it was kind of important to learn how to leverage social media and how to leverage Facebook ads. So I've done it at a real raw level for myself and and for a few a few friends. Same as like when I initially started doing music production, it was for myself and then a couple of my other musician friends were like, hey man, could you do this? And I, you know, I'd do it and then they'd tell their friends and, you know, and then I started getting more work on. And so again, I need to remind myself of these things that there's other people that see value in my production and what I can bring to the table to help them actualize their music projects. So going through a lot of learning and a lot of uh, breaking things down and uh, and reevaluating and you know just trying not to get ahead of myself with things. But I digress. <laughs> I'm really good at that. It's sort of like taken some uh, you know some courses as such, like not university degrees or anything like that, but I've taken a bunch of courses in social media marketing and a bunch of courses in Facebook ads and how to run them both like for a business and as a musician. Uh, and then, so a little while ago during the first, uh, the first really big lot of lockdowns for the pandemic, I was actually at my own Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Academy. I literally just had it up and running for a few months, my family and I had relocated to the western suburbs of Melbourne, you know, not long before. So I could have a crack at like what would supposed to be my dream job. Okay. So we got over there, I got set up, my academy by all means, it was doing well. For the short amount of time it was going. You know, like if I like looked at the books, looked at like uh, pr like projections, if things have been going the way that they were, would have been sweet, <laughs> not locking down. You know, it wouldn't have taken too long. COVID had all that. COVID had other ideas. And unfortunately, even though I did have some amazingly awesome and supportive students, just didn't have enough and didn't have the runway uh, of, 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 um, Ex uh, exposable, expendable income to sort of keep my business uh, afloat while we had no idea how long we were going to be locked down for. So unfortunately, closed the business down. Now, it sucked, you know, it was a bitter pill to swallow, but I, you know, I took solace in a couple of things uh, in that. Um, and, and again, like I had, I had massive doubt and lots of imposter syndrome putting myself out there as this you know, owner and instructor of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Granted, I've done Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for, for so long. It's it, you know, it's like a it's 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 my it, it's my it's like another native language to me. When I get on those mats and I start doing Jiu Jitsu, like it's heart, body, mind, and soul. It's all we're all one. But I still felt really like a fake and a fraud once I started advertising myself and putting myself out there on social media, you know, when I was looking at all the other academies that were, you know, uh, sort of close by and, and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, it's always there. It's always there. But anyway, so close the business down uh, and family, we came back over to, um, to the other side of town where we have, we're originally living. And this is where one of those awesome scenarios where like one door closes and another door opens. A good friend of mine, Damo, uh, was like, hey man, like, he, and he runs a, a digital agency. It's like, hey man, you know, I, I know that you sort of understand social media and you have a love for social media and you understand Facebook ads. 
you know, at a somewhat, you know, like raw, <laughs> raw level, we've usually been outsourcing this sort of stuff. You know, you're kind of stuck at the moment. So as a favor, would you want to have a crack at doing the work? It's either going to be, you know, fine. And you know, you can potentially turn this into a job or, you know, three months down the track, it's going to be, well, you had a, you had a go. Good on you. <laughs> a tribe type scenarios. And I'm grateful to say, and very happy to say that it's been pretty much a year. It's coming on to a year now. So part of an amazing little, uh, amazing little team. I'm going to plug Redline Digital. Amazing little team of guys uh, and girls. Amazing team of people. <laughs> that, uh, you know, it's a, it's a whole new world. This sort of like coming more into a corporate environment. You know, like I've grown up being a musician, uh, working in hospitality, running bars, making coffee as a barista, uh, being a personal trainer and a jujitsu coach. And now, now I'm a digital marketer and it really freaks me out. And so herein lies my latest run-in, one of my latest run-ins, like this whole YouTube thing, this is my latest run-in with imposter syndrome. We'll just get to that in, in just a second. But so pivoting now into, you know, my other job as a digital marketer, as a social media marketer and a Facebook ad specialist, like this is one of the first times I've actually been able to to say those words and like actually feel like I'm kind of semi worthy of it. See how I just like slap myself in the face as I was saying it. But yeah, you know, like I'm, I'm responsible for producing content for brands for their social media and, uh, and you know, like uh, designing Facebook ad campaigns and strategies. Um, and you know, like I love it. It's an amazing job. But for the longest period of time over the last 12 months, I have really, 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 really struggled to actually feel that I'm part of the, A, that I'm part of the team and B, that I am a digital marketer. I'm a social media marketer and Facebook ad specialist. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy been totally feeling like a fraud for the better part of 10 and a half months, but <laughs> I'm not fired yet. So go team. And now finally here doing this on YouTube, this is, this is massive. And as I said, at the beginning of the, of, uh, of this video, um, I took one look at that shiner on my nose and my, that little negative voice in the back of my head. The first thing he did was like, dude, don't do a video. You'll be fine. It's cool. Just don't, you know, just just don't do this video this week, and then once that bruise disappears on your nose, just do another one next week to make it. You know, I really wanted to do that. And grand, like this is only like my second talking head video here on YouTube. Like it was very, it was really important for me to not pop out and actually just like show up and hit record and start blabbering. To the camera so hopefully when i go back through this and start editing i can actually put something together that <laughs> makes some sense and so yeah like this this is this is this is undoubtedly one of the hardest things i've i've ever actually had to do in terms of pressing record and then after i've finished this actually editing and then putting this video out i love youtube i've learned so many invaluable tidbits of information and knowledge that I have directly applied to my music, my music production, my social media strategies and my Facebook ad strategies. I've learned so much good stuff here on YouTube. I'm also like grossly uh, fearful for like the haters and you know, just like the amount of like the amount of dickweeds that are actually in a, abundantly <laughs> on all internet platforms, you know, to be fair. But, you know, like, there's some nasty people saying nasty things in comments, you know, and then here's, here I am, a guy from all outward appearances, you know, 
kind of, you know, rough looking, bald headed, heavily tattooed, like I said, like a, a nolly if he went to jail. <laughs> you know, I should probably have no problems whatsoever, but like, you know, I am a human being and like a lot of people I do have insecurity, massive insecurities that manifest particularly in as imposter syndrome. I've started so many amazing projects and, you know, <laughs> just slowly fall by the wayside. Just like the grit, like the, the level of grit that was necessary to see those projects through just wasn't there. And ultimately I let my imposter syndrome get the better of me. So that's why today, this video in particular is a very important one because I did one last week and now I'm doing this one, trying to follow it up and it has been scaring the absolute bejesus out of me uh, for most of the day. And then I took one, like I said, I took one look at that bruise on my nose and was like, don't do it, man. The fearful imposter voice was, was very speaking up on my shoulder, big time. But now that I'm kind of like getting to the end of like the points that I wanted to talk about, I feel, I feel much better about actually like with this part of the process anyway, just verbal, like just verbalizing and just getting it off my chest uh, has been absolutely amazing. Um, <laughs> uh, I just want to say like, for those of you that have made it this far in the video, I thank you so much <laughs> for, for just listening to my, uh, <laughs> this verbiage of absolute verbal diarrhea but you know it's coming from it's coming from a sincere place it's coming from my heart this is an open honest and raw conversation uh that just i needed i felt like i really needed to, to open up and talk about it if you feel so inclined please like the video subscribe to the channel and if you've experienced imposter syndrome whatsoever in any form please just like Drop a little comment in there, so feel my peeps. Uh, and on that note, thank you so much, guys, and I look forward to speaking to you in another video.